Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of How I Teach with the Language Arts Lady. I'm Donna Reish, your hostess and your teacher. There are two ways to consume How I Teach. You can watch it on video at languageartsladyblog.com or YouTube, and in which case you will have all of the teacher's notebook in the PowerPoint presentation, or you can listen to it on your favorite podcast provider, in which case you will want to be sure you print off your teacher's notebook, that's what I'm scrolling through right now, that you'll print this off ahead of time to have in front of you as you listen. So two ways to consume, it's an audio as well as a video. All right, speaking of teacher's notebook, we are on episode number 41, which means that there are 41 teacher's notebook free lessons, free content, free material for you to use with your students um, in your classroom, in your home, however you would like to use it. And they are chock full, just like this one, of lessons that can actually be used right away. So I've taught many, many of the skills and uh, processes that I use to teach writing and language arts and so forth to my students. So you can grab this at, uh, where do you grab this? You can grab this at your um, at languageartsladyblog.com. And you can get the entire, all 41 episode teacher's notebooks in one volume, or you can just pick and choose whichever ones you want or whichever ones you may have missed. All right, without further ado, let's go on to our PowerPoint. Last week, we started, let's see, I thought I turned that off. Last week, we started with the monthly aspects of planning. So we talked about how uh, we can plan a month out, a month ahead of time, how we can put things in future months. And so actually I began with some concepts, right? I always begin with concepts. <laughs> Usually that is where I start. So out of the prioritizing planner, as well as just time management concepts in general. I talked about how in 2019, I started a life coaching business for weight loss coaching and time management coaching. Uh, when the pandemic hit, I uh, had fewer and fewer clients who were comfortable spending that kind of extra money on their coaching. So I uh, did not get a lot of new clients. And so it kind of just, you know, made, kind of just fizzled out on its own. Um, although I do get uh, contacts from those email lists saying, you know, are you offering coaching again and so on and so forth. But now I am focusing fully on teaching and on Language Arts Lady blog and on these podcasts and broadcasts. So, but when we started that last week, I talked about some concepts, first of all, and how time is like money and that we tend to think of money as being less um, less uh, infinite, right? We think that it's gone, so we see it. We see our accounts go up, we see our accounts go down. But time, we just think, well, I'll have more tomorrow, not realizing that we will never have today again, right? So if we would think of it more as like a bank account with X number of days, <laughs> however many days that might be for each one of us, and that once that's gone, that's gone, just like if we were to go spend $100 on something, that $100 is gone and uh, until we get more. We get more the next day, perhaps, but we still have lost that $100. Um, so when we think about time, it would help us to think of it like that. I talked about planning ahead and organizing and how this makes the difference between getting our goals accomplished and not. So with our monthly calendar, there are some notes there. And I talked about all those last week and how to plan for the month, like putting in your big goals, setting aside a time to plan the next month, writing things in columns and so forth. So now I'm going to move on to weekly planning. And um, I'm going to show you my weekly memos sheets that are in the prioritizing planner. So the prioritizing planner looks like this month, month, just like most typical calendars, and then monthly memos, two-page spread for you to plan for the month, 
in categories. That's what these blocks are for, categories by ca category by category. And then weekly memos, so week one, and then there'll be another one for week two, week three, week four, and that is a two-page spread as well. I love it that all of these planning sheets are two-page spreads. And so this is where we're going to camp out here for a little bit. So first of all, I want to talk about the difference between a to-do list and, and um, telling your time where to go. So we've heard this with planning, uh, budget planning uh, programs, how we should tell our money where to go, how we don't want our money to tell us where to go, but we want to tell it where to go. And the same thing is true with time. And I used to be a master at list making. And I still am really, really good at making lists and, and getting things done. I love, love, love getting things done. I love time management. I love efficiency. I can remember when I was still in high school, I saw the black and white old uh, Cheaper by the Dozen in which the father decided that he was going to take all the children's tonsils out. He was a doctor, but he was going to take all the children's tonsils out at home for efficiency. And um, he called himself an, an efficiency expert right? He was an efficiency expert. And so I dubbed myself as an efficiency expert wannabe and just knew, I, I, I was just so intrigued by some of the things that he did in that movie. They were crazy. A lot of them were crazy. But at the same time, I, I just felt like, that's me. That's how I am. That's, I, I'm an efficiency. I want to be efficient. I want to be an expert in efficiency. I can remember doing that in high school, if you can imagine, at 15 or 16 years old. So I've always loved efficiency and effectiveness and incrementality and systematizing and intentionality and all of those things that come into play when we are planning. But what I used to do is put my things by categories for the next week that I wanted, that I needed to accomplish. Obviously, you'll be consulting your monthly to put things over into this week. So by category, so I might have a teacher pay teachers products, language arts lady store products, um, uh, classes. So this would be grading, editing. I have 60 writing students, so I'm always editing their papers and grading them and um, printing new books and so forth and uh, contacting parents and answering questions, just all those things. And then um, household, uh, blog and content writing, just all the different things, right? all the areas. So the, I, I've always done this. I've always done these in categories. And I think that working in categories is super, super effective, right? Because it's kind of like if you've ever heard of those, you know, that when you have a decision to make, you should make a pro column and a con column. And you should list all the pros on one side and all the cons on the other side. And whichever list is longer is the one that you should do. You should either do it pro or not do it cons. And that is such an ineffective way to make a decision because your pros on this side and your cons on the other side may or probably are not weighted evenly. In other words, Something over here on a pro, you might say, uh, so you want to start working at home. I won't have to uh, get clean. I won't have to do my hair every day or whatever it might be. Well, that might be a pro to you. But over here on the con is we can't live without my income every year. And yet we are saying that the pro, that if the pros are longer, even if they are small things like not fixing my hair, not buying as much makeup, whatever it might be, we are saying that that is as big of a pro as the con of we need my income, right? So you, it's not as simple like, you know, you see kids with those scales, you know, and you put, you try to help teach kids to put in the same weight on each side and they balance each other out. It's not like that. It's not a matter of just putting the, the same things into the scale, whichever side is heavier is the one that you're going to do. And that is the same way it is with the weekly memos. And so I like to do two things with my weekly memos. And I've done this forever and ever and ever. And that is that I categorize it. So this will be by category, all the things that I want to get done next week. And then uh, in addition to putting it by categories, I put, I use the, what I call the ABC approach. And that means that A is something that I really, really need to get done. B is something that I would like to get done. And C is like, realistically, I'm probably not getting to that. 
but it's okay if it's on here because it's a C. So now we have not only categories to work out of, but we also have priorities within the categories. So this is an A for the week. This over here might be a B, C, A, 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 right? And so then we, we go through and we write whether things are all A's and B's and C's according to the, um, the date, due date, and um, how important it is and how uh, critical it is to do it like quickly, right? And so I've always done that. And then I also was really big on timers. And I love timers. If you could see me right now, I'm sitting here with my timer cube. I have timer cubes. I love, love, love them. And my timer is ticking off and I have 18 minutes and 35 seconds left until I'm 30 minutes into this broadcast. So I've always loved timers and I use them with my kids extensively. My husband and I trained our children in all of their morning routines, all of their chores, all of their responsibilities with timers, letting them see how quickly they could accomplish something, uh, letting them see how fast we could get something done as a family. Timers were our jam just forever and ever and ever. And they continued to be as I graduated all my kids and became an empty nester, work from home, a former homeschooling mom, which is kind of funny because my husband and I do parts of uh, homeschooling for 120 kids each week. But anyway, you get the drift. And so I've always been one to time. So I would, for example, say that I think I could do this task and I would put it on my task list for the day. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. And then I would put time, like how long I thought it would take. And so uh, that was the kind of like telling your time where to go a little bit more than just having a category list. So the progression in that is monthly goals and then putting your monthly into this week under the weekly memos. And the next progression is of course that they're by categories. So that makes it even more effective. You're again, you're, you're getting that yeah, more to that granular level. And then from the categories, we have the ABC. And then the, the next level of uh, kind of success or um, uh, really potentiality, potentiality in this process is the timer. So allowing yourself a certain amount of time to get those things accomplished. So I'm gonna talk more about that when I get into blocking on the daily ones. But so then I would do my weekly memos. And uh, again, uh, I uh, practice uh, a practice called weekly hour one. So I'm gonna go back to that. Um, there it is, weekly hour one. And I learned this at the Life Coach School uh, when I was in their training uh, for self-coaching scholars for a year, it's amazing training. And so with the weekly hour one, you don't just say, how long a task will take, you actually fill in your daily log for the next week based on your weekly list. And you do it in one hour. It takes one hour to do this. Uh, I like to do it on Fridays um, or Saturdays, but sometimes, unfortunately, it's all the way to Sunday before I get this done. But they, they go on to you know, everything that you're going to need to do. And then I start what I call blocking. And for that, I just grab a large sticky note and I just put all the days of the week across the top and then lines down. So we have categories. And then I move everything onto the sticky note from the weekly memo. So I do this for things that I know that are set times, first of all, and the morning blocking then will further do that. So I come here to my weekly memos and I, uh, I also fill these in, big goals for the month, words to live by, some motivation there. Uh, I like to keep my goals for the month in the, in the um, you know, forefront of my mind. So here I am on the weekly and I also fill in this, but this week I'm grateful for these things. Um, I moved all the days that I moved one, two, three, four, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then there's another setup here that you can do for something else. So here is the movement one, but it could be anything, right? And then this could be, I read aloud, uh, to my kids or my classroom. 
Um, I uh, did my gratefulness journal. I did personal reading. If you're trying to you know, increase your reading, I worked in the kitchen for 15 minutes, just, just some kind of goal that you're trying to do that is a daily type of thing. You can use these little blocks here for the week. All right, then before I move into the daily any, a little bit more, I want to show you over here, these two ma mantras. Now, you know, we hear about mantras and they're supposed to make us, you know, do things in a certain way. And, you know, obviously just repeating something over and over again doesn't make it happen, right? And that's another reason why I really love the Life Coach School because I learned the difference between um, just, you know, the power of positive thinking versus thinking, um, uh, feeling, thinking, feeling, acting and how your actions will actually give you results. But at any rate, this week's self-talk, this is fantastic because we forget what we have already been successful at. We forget what we are already good at. And so I love this over here. Each week I like to put a new thing in here. I was already successful at blank, so I know that I can succeed at blank, right? So in the case of the reading aloud, maybe you wanted to do it, you know, in the morning and then again in the afternoon. I was already successful at morning read aloud, so I know I can succeed at afternoon read aloud. Or I'm already successful at, you know, doing my, uh, making sure that the uh, kitchen is clean before I go to bed. So I know that I can succeed at uh, um, cleaning up the dishes after each meal immediately or whatever it might be. You know, I was already successful at, um, you know, getting my child or my students or my class through the times fives. So I know I can succeed at the times sixes or whatever. I mean, it can be anything. It can be personal. It can be family. It can be work. It can be school. And then this one here is another great one. Regardless of blank, I will blank until blank. And this is just really a reminder not to give up. So regardless of how I feel, regardless of if, if it doesn't work out this week, or I'm not successful at this this week, or I have a bad week or whatever, I will still do these things until this happens. So I have a lot of fitness goals. So my, a lot of times we'll read, you know, regardless of how busy and hectic things get, I will do my minimum baseline exercises until I am the size I want to be or the strength that I want to be or whatever the goal might be for that. Okay, so now I'm going to take all of the things. I'm going to get a, a half page sticky note. That's my large sticky note. They're like the, the five by eights. And I just make my categories Sunday, uh, Monday through Sunday on there. And I come in here and I put down times. So I come in here to my calendar and my, my calendar here is really, really, really full. So I'm, and, and probably, you know, it depends on how you use yours, right? But I use mine for um, everything that I have, teaching-wise, meeting-wise, family-wise, babysitting-wise, our moms, whatever it might be. So these, these are really, really full. Um, it's, very, it's very unusual for me not to have morning, afternoon, and evening right now um, taken up, just at the stage of life that I'm in with businesses and teaching and having so many grandkids and so forth. So um, I come in here and I put these onto that sticky note. It's what I'm starting to call, it's what I call blocking. It's giving, telling your time where to go. So I will come along here and an example that I have already right now is that on Monday, I already know that um, at, uh, um, at um, eight o'clock, I'm going to work out alone. At 9.30, I have a Zoom meeting. At 12.30, I have a Zoom meeting. At two o'clock, I have a phone meeting for my stepmom's care, treatment care plan, uh, because she um, is in rehab. And uh, I also know that I have Ezra from 1.30 to 5.30 and Jack and Teddy from 5.30 to 10. So that's all right here. So that goes on to my sticky note. 8 a.m. workout. 9.30, Holly and Beth. 12.30, Instagram meeting. 
1.30, Ezra arrives. Two o'clock, phone meeting for my stepmom. Five o'clock, Ezra goes. 5.30, Jack and Teddy come. And so I put those all down, all down my whole blocking for that day. My whole, all my sticky note, all under Monday. And then I come along here and I see if there are any times that are open, which Monday's really, really, really full. As soon as I got done teaching, then I just started filling it up when I went, when I went on winter break, right? So, but if there's any time, like for example, um, between 9.30, 10.30 and 12.30, between those two meetings, uh, when, the, when my 9.30 meeting ends and my, before my 12.30 meeting begins, I will have 10.30 to 11.30 or 10.30 to 12.30 or whatever it might be. And I'll leave that space open. And then on that day, I will block anything that I can get done during that time. So I'm literally telling my time where to go. And like I said, I learned this at the life coach school, but it was just phenomenal because I was always such a timer plus uh, task list, timer plus task list. That's what, that was kind of my mantra. If you use a timer plus a task list, you're going to get way more accomplished. Well, now I just look at my day and I see, okay, I have from 1030 to 1230. So then I look back on my weekly list and I put the, some of the A's in there from 1030 to 1230. And especially, you know, no ones that I know. And so I'll say 1030. So for example, I'll say 1030 to 11 o'clock, um, write my description for, um, this product, 11 to 11.30, uh, 11 to 12, write podcast notes for the teacher's notebook for the next week, 12 to, uh, 12 to 12.30 um, before my next meeting comes, 12 to 12.30, answer parents or write the front matter for another product. And it is, it is on my sticky note, but it came from here came from here, it came from here, and it came from here. Um, now, I also use this daily fives, and this is another way to block. If you don't want to use sticky notes to block, like what I just described, you can just do all of your blocking on here if you want, as long as you want to put time in, into it. But another thing that I do is I look at the day, and I've often heard that Outside of your regular stuff, and it depends on whether you are an entrepreneur or you work outside the home or whatever, but it is unusual for people to get to more than three things in any given day, like three things that are not, you know, like I work out here, I read here, I take my shower there. I mean, three things that are not, you know, recurring or constant. And so that always kind of bugged me, right? Because I was like, I'm an entrepreneur and I work from home. And I should be able to get more than three things done, you know, above and beyond my regular time. Now I do teach and drive and edit and grade 25 to 30 hours a week. So it is kind of difficult to get more than three. But what this does is this takes on the first five, you write down the first five things that you want to get done that are, you know, like bigger projects. So I might put on here a description for, um, slinky dog two. And then I write, might put on here front matter for slinky dog two. Layout broadcast 42 and give to my assistant. And then here I might put um, write a monthly, a, a Monday mini meal. And I'm, I'm just putting down the things that are, you know, the first five things that I would like to get done when I don't have all of those other things that I just mentioned. And then this right here is really phenomenal because this is called the fast five. So we have the first five and we have the fast five. And the fast five are things that you can get done in 10 minutes or less. And I can't remember where I heard this, but I, I, I just, I've always been one like to use my time super, super wisely. So if I only have five to 10 minutes, I wanna put something in that slot to get something done. So, you know, my fast five right now on my list is answer Elijah's parents. Um, I'm just looking over here, order um, my, uh, finish my Amazon order. Um, looking over my, uh, cancel my nail appointment. Um, call my 
stepmom's nursing home and talk to the social worker. And so these are things that are going to take 10 minutes or less, 10 minutes or fewer. And the reason I love this is because we always have these snatches of time that we don't really see where we can put things, what we can put in them. And by having my first five and my fast five, I know exactly any time that I'm not completely booked what I'm going to do. So you can use this rather than using a, the sticky note that I said. But the reason I like the sticky note is because I like to put everything in at my time, eight o'clock, work out, 9.30, meeting with these people, 12.30, meeting with these people, um, you know, uh, two o'clock, meeting with these people, one, one thirty, Ezra come, you know, that's my youngest grandbaby until next month. And, and I do, a, I do a lot of childcare for special occasions and things like that. Not necessarily daily, but with 10 grandkids, it can feel like daily sometimes. And so this is just another way to say, these are the most important things. These are the most important things for Tuesday. These are the most important things for Wednesday. So I really just cannot say enough about um, this approach to planning your week. All right, so back here, I wanna talk about what I do every morning. So if you use the sticky note method <laughs> that I just described, before I ever get up on Monday morning, my sticky note is already filled with those things I just said. So my sticky note already says eight o'clock, work out alone, nine o'clock, finish getting ready, 9.30, meet with Holly and Beth, um, 10.30, 11, 11.30, 12, and that's all open. And there's nothing on that yet. And it already says uh, Instagram meeting, 12.30. Ezra arrived, 1.30. Phone meeting with the nursing home at two o'clock and Jack and Teddy arrive at five o'clock. It already says all of those things because I've taken those from my monthly and I put them into my day. So I can look at a glance and see exactly what my day looks like. Then I do what is called morning blocking. And that is 15 minutes in the morning where I block my day. And this is just amazing because I'm doing what I just told you. I'm going to take, I only have that two hours. Like what I just described to you on Monday, I really literally only have two hours. And with teaching, a lot of times I might only have one hour or two hours, you know, that is not taken up with grandkids or kids or moms, or, um, you know, we have a, we have a um, cleaning business for a, for a doctor's office. And so it would be unusual for me to have very much extra time, but I do have that time. So when I have it, it's going to be right there. I'm going to get up on Monday morning. I'm going to check my first five. I'm going to check my fast five. And I'm going to see if any of those can go in the time slots that I have left. And that, um, what did I say I have? 10.30 to 11, 11, 11.30, 12 to 12. 1130 to 12, 12 to 12:30. And I'm going to move those things over into my law, law, my large sticky note for my blocking. And this is literally telling your time where to go. Now, obviously, I had so much trouble with this at first because I, I've always been unrealistic about how long things will take. So I've always been kind of like, um, you know, well, I can I should be able to get this done in this time. I should be able to get that done in that time. And my husband calls that shoehorning. And so I would often, you know, shoehorn things in. But when I literally say 1030 to 11, write slinky dog to description, there's no question. You know how if you don't have your day blocked and all of a sudden you have this two hour period because and the day so, so full that you're like, two hour break, you know, I should do this or that, or, or next thing you know, the two hours is up because you're just waiting for the next thing to happen and you haven't gotten very much accomplished. And by doing this, I'm blocking each half an hour. I'm giving each half an hour something. I'm telling it, we're I'm telling my time where to go. We have a tendency to put in those, all those appointments, but we don't always put in the, what we're going to do when we don't have appointments and what we're going to do when we're not teaching. And that is where my morning blocking comes into play. The other wonderful thing about morning blocking that I just touched upon is that once I'm off my 930 call at 1030, I'm going to look down at my blocking. And it already says, like I said, 1030 to 11 o'clock, write slinky dog to front matter. Okay, let's go. And I also practiced another concept that I didn't include in this that's called breadcrumbs, leaving breadcrumbs. So um, 
maybe when I'm done blocking, I will put Slinky, my Slinky Dog 2 document beside me. Maybe that's 1030 to 11 Slinky Dog 2. I'm going to write the front matter. And then beside that, I might have uh, Peter Pan 1. I'm going to write the, the teacher pay teacher's description. So that's right beside me. And then beside that, I'm going to edit the stack of papers um, from 11.30 to 12. So that stack of papers is right next to that stack. And then from 12 to 12.30, I am going to uh, write next week's mon uh, Monday mini mail. And so if I have any notes or anything that I've made on my phone or something, I'll print that off and put that over there. And that's called leaving out breadcrumbs. So that when the time comes and I have that time to work on that, here's Slinky Dog 2, here's Peter Pan 1, here um, are my edits for classes, and there are my notes for my Monday mini mail. Leaving out breadcrumbs, we have a trail that we can follow. So anyway, I, I hope you can hear, I know, I know you can hear the excitement in my voice because I get so excited talking about time management because I just feel like I've been given so many gifts of time management, of tips and tricks through the years that I have gathered from places. And I'm so grateful for all the things that I've learned that helping somebody else, especially a busy mom or a busy teacher to uh, adopt some of these ideas and be able to put them into practice in their own lives is just really amazing to me. So then at the end of the week, weekly hour done. So weekly hour one, is when I put everything onto my big sticky note that is already set. And then every morning I block and I take some things from my first five, I take some things from my fast five, I put them wherever they can go. And then I, um, I do everything like that day after day. And then at the end of the week, it's called weekly hour done. So weekly hour one is to get the first, uh, get do work for one hour to get the week ready. Weekly hour done is to look and see what is still left. And this is where I'm moving my C's over, right? I'm moving my C's over from the weekly memos over to next week's weekly memos or next, you know, or next week's first five or next week's fast five or wh wherever I think it's going to fall. I like to practice the concept of what is due next? What is due next? And so I look at my schedule and I know, okay, wait a minute, tomorrow, Tuesday morning, you know, I have to be ready to leave at this time. So one of my fast fives is to pack my tote for Tuesday. Another fast five is to pack my food and drinks and have everything out, my water bottles and everything. I like to take two water bottles everywhere I go. Um, and so, then another thing is, you know, to get clothes out because I, I have to leave so early on Tuesday. So I, another fast five might be getting clothes out and getting those ready for tomorrow. Another fast five might be double checking my edits or whatever before I pack them. And I know that those things need to come next because they're due, right? So the concept of what's due next, I always tell my students, you are not going to be just dealing with what's due next and what's due after that and what's due after that when you are a student. But it's actually a lifelong um, skill that we need in every area of our lives. So I always just say, what's next? What's next? Okay, next Ezra is coming. I need to get out all of his baby stuff. Okay, okay, next Jack and Teddy are coming. I want to, um, uh, I want to pull out the tubs of toys that I'm gonna have them play with tonight. And, and so I'm always looking at, you know, what is due next? And a lot of times I think people, we, we don't know what to do. And if we would just ask ourselves, what's due next? We would always know what to do next. All righty, well, it has been a pleasure to talk to you about um, planning, time management and so forth. My time management system, the prioritizing planner of the pages that I just showed you, it is available in, um, eight and a half, eight by 10, eight and a half by 11. Um, but uh, you can also, you know, scale it down and, you know, print it smaller, put three holes in it. I personally use uh, rings in mine uh, to, to uh, put my, my planners all together. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time on How I Teach.